Hey everybody, Mark Herman, aka LA Bengal fan on Twitter, repping the Bengals for the AFC Northerners. Uh, we're not getting together for our show to, this week at Rocco's Tavern. We will be doing that next week. We'll be doing individual updates, and I will have a post game report coming up right after the game this Sunday. Um, so let's jump right into it. I'm not going to spend a lot of time recapping last week's game. If you want to see that, I gave you a video uh, right after the game last week. I was pretty harsh on the Bengals, but I think deservedly so. Um, I was also harsh on Marvin Lewis for blowing smoke up our ass and patronizing us, uh, you know, the week before with the Joe Mixon comments about him needing to look and learn or sit on the bench and learn from Jeremy Hill. Um, but I do want to give him props this week because in his post-game press conference, um, he said that we that they won the game despite themselves and they had to overcome themselves to win the game was, I think, his exact words. And I think that was a really accurate assessment of themselves. Um, so I will give him some props for actually saying the right thing this time at the press conference and, uh, and not sitting there so much with a shit-eating grin. But if he steps back into stupid comments, don't worry. You know me. I will not hesitate to say, fuck you, Marvin. So, um, but props to him this week for saying the right thing. Um, I don't think we can go anywhere without talking about this A.J. McCarron trade, no trade. Um, I would figure that, that the Browns and us would be involved in a trade, the only trade that didn't go through. But... Um, it's clear from the reports that I've seen that the Browns botched this. Um, they were going to give us a second and a third. They were going to get A.J. McCarron. Um, they, both teams have to notify the league office. So the fact that they said, well, we signed the paperwork and sent it to uh, to the Bengals to turn in for us. I mean, they know that that doesn't finalize the trade. I don't know if they wanted to get out of the trade. I don't see why they would want all the bad press and the blundering that it looks like they're having to deal with press-wise this week. Um, but you know what? Maybe it wasn't meant to be. Maybe it's a blessing in disguise. I'll get into that later on here. But uh, so McCarron is still a Bengal. Um, some interesting storylines going into this week. We have um, Chris Smith's return to Jacksonville. So this is his first time in Jacksonville in a visitor's uniform. You know he wants to leave, leave a lasting impression on that fan base so and that coaching staff. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, and we have to have our offense. They have to stay out of their own way. They can't pull the crap they pulled uh, you know, last week against Indy. And they certainly have to play better run defense than they played against Le'Veon Bell the week before because we're facing Leonard Fournette this week. Um, I haven't heard the status of Trey Hopkins. Um, his injury looked pretty bad. Um, and since I haven't heard anything, I can only assume it's not good. Um, maybe there's a little cat and mouse with the injury report, but I don't know that Jacksonville prepares any differently um, if we have Redmond in the lineup. So, But if or Trey Hopkins is out, Redmond's going to need to step up and be big for us. Um, also, I haven't heard if John Ross is practicing, not practicing. I mean, there were, there were reports that he practiced fully last week and then didn't play in the game. Um I don't know what Marvin's deal is. Um, I, I know that they jokingly have referred to uh, John Ross as a mirage on uh, on Reddit. Um, I actually named him Bigfoot because I don't know that there's any real scientific evidence other than some some brief sightings of him. The, so I think of him more of the Loch Ness Monster, but I like Bigfoot better as a name. So I'm going to call him Bigfoot. Um, but other than that one play in the fumble, I don't think there's been any real sightings of uh, him. So that's the name I'm going with. Um, you know, it's really hard. I said this last week. It's hard to be confident confident going into this game with the way our offense is playing. Uh, this is going to be a close game. Our defense will keep this keep us in this game. Um, and, and the big X factor is going to be Blake Bortles and our coaching staff. Um, uh, I think Paul Gunther will design a, a scheme where we get pressure on Bortles. And maybe we can get some free from turnovers from him. Maybe we can get the short field, much like we did for Baltimore in week one. Maybe we can get that for us this week, where we can come in and surprise him at home um, with the short field. But we're going to need help. And the help's going to come from our defense, from a scheme that's going to get Blake Bortles to turn the ball over to us. And also, we have to make Blake Bortles be the guy who beats us, not Leonard Fournette. So we're going to have to play better run defense than we saw against Le'Veon Bell um, you know, a couple weeks ago. But we do have a puncher's chance. We could win this game. If we can keep this game close, we definitely have a chance to win this game. Um, 
I've read, I've seen on Reddit that they've uh, they start on Sunday right after we uh, after the indie game they wanted to start a prayer circle for Andy Dalton because he's going into Saxonville and clearly um, w it was disturbing how much trouble we had protecting Andy Dalton against an Indianapolis defense that's really not that good and and Andy didn't have time and a lot of that I think has to do with the scheme um, they had Andy dropping back. And, and holding the ball three, four seconds. Um, perhaps our coaching staff needs to pop in the Seattle tape from last week and watch Russell Wilson is under siege within two seconds on every single play. Yet they managed to run plays. Uh, now, granted, Russell Wilson is a better athlete than Andy Dalton. Um, but they but they scheme. Part of it, it's not all Russell Wilson. Part of it is Pete Carroll scheming. Um, and, and taking some pressure off the offensive line. So we're going to have to have that help this week. Our coaching staff, especially on the offensive end, is going to have to step up and scheme plays. We ran a, a wide receiver sweep with Alex Erickson last week that was a pretty effective play. We're going to need to do gimmick plays like that. We're going to need to run different type of tight end screens to Tyler Croft or running back screens to Joe Mixon. We're going to have to do stuff to keep them off balance. Um if we're going to win this game and take pressure off our offensive line. So we're not asking them to do what they're physically not capable of doing. So, um, and then one of the interesting storylines could be if Andy is under siege, if Andy does get hurt, um, AJ McCarron comes in and wins the game for us, brings us back and wins the game for us in a game where he wasn't even really supposed to be on our team. He's only on our team because of the botched, uh, trade by the Browns, it would be a really neat storyline to uh, to have A.J. McCarron win the game for us when he wasn't even supposed to be a Bengal this week. So um, be real, real interesting to see how this all plays out. Um, I'd like to see Chris Smith, too, be the player of the game. I'd like to see him have a Dunlap-type play that makes him Defensive Player of the Week. By the way, shout out to Carlos Dunlap. Congratulations. He was the defensive AFC Defensive Player of the Week. Uh, the AFC Offensive Player of the Week was Juju Schuster. So props to the AFC North for taking the you know those two spots uh, that we're definitely representing. So, um, but we're going to need. I'd love to see Chris Smith be the Defensive Player of the Week because of the game he had against his former team in Jacksonville, and I know he would like that too. So um, with that, but like I said, so I think we're going to uh, we're going to need we're going to need. Uh, you know, the, the coaching staff to show up, the offensive line, and the defense has to play well and shut down Fournette. I, with all that said, I'm going to be optimistic, and I'm going to predict a 23-20 Bengal victory. Um, and let's form a prayer circle, and let's hope for that, okay? Um, so with that, I would like to sign off, as I always do, with Fuck the Patriots, and we will see you next week in a group show from Rocco's Tavern. So bye, everybody.